Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can use Zoom video conferencing. What I'm gonna show first is how you get Zoom video conferencing onto your computer. Then I'm gonna give a quick walkthrough of how you can use Zoom video conferencing. And at the very end, whether you're new to Zoom or whether you're an existing user, I'm gonna show some advanced functionality that you might not have known about. Uh, for example, when you turn on your video, how do you add a virtual background or how do you smooth out your skin so you look really sharp in the video. Before we get started, what is video conferencing? Well, with video conferencing, what you can do is you can be a host of a meeting. And as a host of a meeting, you create a virtual meeting space and then you can invite others to your meeting space. Once you invite others into the meeting space, you can talk with one another, uh, you could view each other via uh, webcams, you could also share content with other people. So you could share your computer screen, you could even share a virtual whiteboard where you could write on the whiteboard and then everyone else in your meeting room can see what you're writing on your whiteboard. You could watch videos together and everyone will see the video simultaneously uh, with the audio for the video. Uh, so it really allows you to meet and collaborate effectively. So if you're a teacher and you're trying to uh, run through a lesson plan or a lecture to your students, this will work effectively. If let's say you work for a business, maybe it's a small business, a large business, you'll be able to meet with your coworkers very effectively using Zoom video conferencing. Okay, well enough talk, why don't we jump into it and first off I'll show you how you can get it. Here I am at my PC and what we're gonna do to get Zoom is we're gonna go to a website called zoom.us. That's the homepage of Zoom video conferencing. And we're gonna head here. You'll see this page right here. And what we're gonna do is it's actually very easy to get Zoom onto your computer. Over here on the right-hand side of the page, you'll see a few different options. One of them is join a meeting. Uh, so let's say you're a student and you're trying to join a class that maybe your teacher created, or maybe you're trying to join a meeting, you could just click on there. And what that'll do is that'll bring up a prompt where you enter the meeting ID or a personal link name. I'm gonna go back and let's say that we wanna host a meeting. What you can do is you click here and then you have a few options. You could start hosting a meeting with your video turned off. You could host a meeting with your video turned on or you could start it with your screen sharing on. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click with video on. What'll happen now is Zoom is launching. If you've never downloaded or used Zoom before, you're gonna be prompted to download and run a, an installation for Zoom. I recommend going ahead and doing that. I've already done that. And so at this point, my browser is asking me if I wanna open this application. So once you've installed it and you've gone through that, simply click on Open Zoom. So now that I've clicked on Open Zoom, what it's doing is it's connecting to my meeting that I just created. And I get this prompt that appears that says, uh, do I wanna join with my computer audio? And I'll go ahead and click on yes. And I could set that so it just automatically does that in the future as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now I'm in the main interface of this Zoom meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and just expand it so it uses up the full screen. Within the interface, probably the first thing you wanna do is it's a little lonely if you're just meeting on your own. And first off, there I am in my webcam. You can see the room that I'm sitting in here. And what you likely wanna do is you wanna invite other participants. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on invite. And what you could do is if you have contacts already, you could select them from here, or you could click on email and you could send out an invitation. I'll show a quick example with Gmail. What it'll do is it'll open up my browser window into Gmail and it'll create create an email with the invitation. So here it says, please join uh, this Zoom meeting, which is in progress. And then there's a URL, which your participants can click on to automatically join the meeting. So I'm gonna jump back into Zoom. Uh, that's one way where you can invite other participants. What you can also do is you can copy the URL here. So if I copy the URL, that'll add it to my clipboard, and then I could send it to someone, let's say via uh, Instant Messenger, or maybe I wanna send it through my email program, or any other way that you wanna share the meeting. You could also copy the full invitation, so similar to the invitation that we saw in Gmail. That's how you get other people into your meeting. Uh, pretty simple to do. Now what I wanna do is now that we've talked about how you invite more people to your meeting, the next thing that I wanna show you how to do is some of the controls that you have. So we're gonna go from left to right across the bottom here. 
So what you could do is the first thing that you see here is you can mute your microphone. That's one of the options that I have. So if I click on that, that will mute my microphone. A really neat little trick that you could do, and it says right up here in the text here, uh, but let's say that I'm on a large call with a number of people and I wanna make a quick comment, but I don't want my microphone to just be on continuously. What I could do is press the space bar and that'll temporarily unmute you. And then if I let go of the space bar, that'll mute me again. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. If you click on these little carrot icons, what that does is this exposes additional options. So if I click on that, uh, let's say I have multiple microphones hooked up, in which case I do, I could select the microphone I wanna use. I could also select the speaker that I wanna use for this call. So maybe I have a headset on that I wanna direct my audio through. I could select that here. Um, and now I'm also gonna jump onto this next setting here. I could turn my video on and off. So I'm gonna stop my video for a moment and there you see my nice little profile picture that I have here. Um, and then I could also start my video up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. Uh, this also has a carrot um, icon where you could select the camera if you happen to have multiple cameras hooked up. Additionally, you could also set other video settings or choose a virtual background. We're gonna have some fun with a virtual background real, real quick. This is kind of one of the fun features of Zoom. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Um, and you see all these different virtual backgrounds that you can choose. Uh, some of them are video backgrounds, which move, which are kind of neat. Here you see I'm on a beach uh, and you see the waves going in back of me. But today what I wanna do is I'm actually gonna show you my bedroom here. This is my bedroom. It's a, see, check it out. There's my bed back there. Uh, there's some fish swimming out there. I don't know why they're not moving, but um, this is my bedroom down here. Um, so very, very cool. But it's kind of neat that you could add these different virtual backgrounds, especially if you're just sitting like me uh, in, a, in a basic room and you want to kind of spice things up. It could even be fun in a video conferencing. Everyone comes in with their own virtual background. You could kind of have some fun with it. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the main screen here. So we walk through a few of these functions. The next thing that I wanna show you is how you can manage participants in a Zoom video conference. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Manage Participants and it brings up this frame on the side. Now, this room is pretty empty because I'm the only one here, but I'll, I'll still demonstrate what you can do. So I'm the host here and what I can do is I can mute the individual or I could rename the person or change the profile photo. So you have a few different options that you could do for the different people who are in the meeting. Now a few controls down here uh, which are nice. Let's say that you're you're running a meeting and you're presenting a presentation and you don't want to hear noise from different participants on the call. This happens a lot in meetings where someone might not mute their microphone and you get background noise. You could simply mute all. And so this will go ahead and mute everyone and you have the option to allow participants to unmute themselves if they want to say something or you could check it off and force everyone to listen and not give anyone the opportunity to jump in. Uh, what you can also do is let's say that you finish up a lecture and you want to give the opportunity for everyone to talk, you could unmute everyone. And then you also have this more drop down with a few different options. Uh, some of them are nice where if someone joins the meeting, uh, you just mute them by default when they enter. Um, here, once again, you could set whether you want uh, participants to be able to unmute themselves, if you want them to be able to rename them th in, uh, themselves. In an educational environment, this could be interesting if you allow renaming because people might come up with interesting names that you might not approve of. Uh, so use caution with this option. There's also the play enter exit chime uh, in the meeting environment for work. This could be very annoying if you have a larger meeting where you constantly get a chime every time someone comes or goes. Uh, so also use caution with that as well. And then you have have the ability to lock the meeting. Uh, so a few different ways that you can manage your participants in a meeting. The next one, this is very, very nice within Zoom video conferencing. What you could do is you can share your screen, but you could really do a lot more than just share your screen. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And within here, you see all the different options that you have. So I could just share my entire screen here and you can see everything I have on the screen. Uh, you could also share a specific window. So maybe you have things on the screen. For example, here on my screen, I have some notes on the side and maybe I don't wanna share that. So I could just share a specific window instead. Uh, what you can also do is you can share an iPhone or an iPad screen uh, using this option here. And this is a very nice option where you could share a whiteboard. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and let's see what this looks like. So here I am within the whiteboard view and what you could do is you could draw on the whiteboard, you could type text on the whiteboard. So I'll say, hello world. 
Uh, you could also spotlight on something. Uh, so lots of different controls here where you could demonstrate points or draw things. Uh, let's say you're a math instructor and you wanna draw equations on here. You could do that very easily. It's very nice if you're on a laptop with a touch screen that you could use because then you could just draw right on the screen and everyone can see that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing there. I'm gonna go back to share screen and just show a few other things that you could do as well. Let's say that you all wanna watch a video clip together. You could check this box that says optimize screen sharing for video clip and then it's also going to share your computer sound with other participants uh, so just another thing you could share as well there are a few more tabs here advanced sharing and there's also you could share specific files um, so lots of functionality hidden under this sharing option so now I'm gonna go back down. What you also have, you have the ability to chat with other participants. You could specify whether you wanna chat with everyone or with just an individual uh, within the room. Down on the bottom as well, you also have the option. So if I click on record, what that'll do is that'll actually kick off a recording of this meeting. What I can do is, let's say I wanna pause the recording. Maybe we're taking a short break. I could go ahead and pause it. And now I'm gonna click on play again and that'll resume the recording. Uh, you see the little recording icon up here next to my name, and then I could stop the recording. So let's say that maybe you're a teacher uh, and some students weren't able to make the class today. Well, then you could share the recording with them. Or similarly, in a business setting, uh, maybe some attendees couldn't uh, come to the meeting and you share with them after the fact. The last thing that I wanna show before we go into breakout rooms is reactions. So let's say that you know I'm a great teacher and all my students love what I'm sharing. I'm, an, I'm sure I'm gonna get a big round of applause at the end of my lecture. So let's go ahead and give the clap and there the clap appears within the screen uh, and you can have different participants share their reaction. Now I also wanna show something, this is a neat one, especially if you're in teaching, you have something called breakout rooms. I'll show you at the end, this is an advanced feature. I'll show you how to turn this on. So with breakout rooms, I could click into that and what that will do is I could say, let's say I have a class of, let's say 30 students, I could set up three breakout rooms. So you have 10 students per classroom. I could either manually distribute people to those rooms or I could just let Zoom take care of it for me. And what that'll do is it'll put people into separate rooms where maybe they're working on a group project uh, and then they'll be in a separate room where they could do that and then as uh, the leader of or as the host of the Zoom session, you could also bring people back in when that breakout session is over. So kind of a very nice feature that you have here. So this is a lot of the primary functionality within the main Zoom uh, screen. Now I wanna show some of the exciting and fun functionality that you can leverage. And to do that, I'm gonna click on this carrot and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into some of the advanced settings here. So here within settings, what I wanna do first is let's start at general. So we're gonna start at the top. And one of the neat ones that I kind of like is uh, you could set your reaction skin tone. Uh, so it's the Simpsons yellow by default, but I could go from a light all the way to a dark skin tone, uh, depending on how I wanna represent myself. Uh, so I'm gonna stick with the uh, just the standard one. The next one I wanna jump to is video. So here you could see myself in uh, the camera. And one of the kind of neat features that you have here is there's something called touch up my, my appearance. So here you see my skin, it's not 100 percent smooth I could probably put a little bit of makeup on and look even better but what I could do is I could just let zoom do that for me so touch up my appearance you see my skin got quite a bit smoother and clearer uh, so there's what I look like uh, I'll just leave that on let's go ahead and leave that on so I'll just clear up my skin a little bit uh, what you can also do is there's another setting here called spotlight my video when I speak. Um, if you have a lot of different participants, whoever is speaking will then be in the spotlight and everyone will see who's speaking uh, in their video. Um, and then the other one we touched on was the virtual background, which you could also select from here and you could choose your background. Kind of a fun little thing to have um, so you don't just see a plain room in the background. You could even have competitions for who has the most exciting room that they're sitting in. Once you go through and you're done with your meeting, you could simply click on end meeting down here. Uh, what's interesting is when you're done with your meeting, you could end the meeting for everyone and it's over, or you could assign someone else as the host and then you could leave the meeting and someone else can continue on. So some options here and what you wanna do, but I am done with the meeting, so I'm just gonna go ahead and end it for all. What'll also happen is once my meeting is over, it'll take my recording and it'll create an MP4 file from that. Uh, and here you see my video file that I can then go share with other people who maybe were unable to uh, make the meeting. It gives you a few different, uh, here's the audio only and the full playback. I could go ahead and click on that um, and we can see what it looks like. So here I am with my recording.
Within Zoom, once you install it, you also get a Zoom client on your computer. So you could either start or join a meeting from the website, or you could come directly into the client and create a new meeting from here or join a meeting. And you also have the ability to schedule meetings as well. So there's lots of stuff that you could do directly from within the client. One more thing that I wanted to show is some of the advanced functionality for the breakout rooms. And to get there, what you do is on the main page of zoom.us, you click on my account. And then within my account, we're gonna go down to settings. And within settings, we're gonna click on in meeting, advanced. And then you'll see an option here for breakout room and you could toggle that either on or off. I'm gonna turn that on. And one other thing that I also wanted to share, this one's kind of sneaky and kind of interesting, but if you're a teacher, they have something called attention tracking, or heck, even if you work in a corporate environment, this one could be interesting, but it lets the host see an indicator in the participant panel if a meeting webinar attendee does not have Zoom in focus during screen sharing. So let's say your students are joined into the session, but maybe they're watching YouTube instead of watching you. You will know if they're doing that and you can call them out. Uh, or maybe if you're in a corporate environment, you could also call someone out, but you know, only do it to one of your coworkers who perhaps you don't like as much. So that's some of the advanced functionality for Zoom. The next thing that I wanna show are some of the plans and the pricing and how you could use this. Now, Zoom has some amazing free uh, plan here. Uh, here under the basic personal meeting, you can host meetings with up to 100 participants. Where they get you though is they limit the meeting to only 40 minutes. So if you want longer than that, you have to pay, but you only pay for the host. So it's not bad, it's pretty good value. Um, but you get a lot of this functionality for free and then you get even more functionality with the more advanced plans. Uh, but even just for free, you could basically do some pretty awesome video conferences. All right, well, that was a quick tutorial of how you use Zoom video conferencing. It's pretty awesome software, very easy to use. Uh, you could either host a session, join a session, and it works pretty well. Anyway, if you watched this video and you were able to either host or join a meeting and now you know a little bit more about how to use Zoom video conferencing, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other video topics that you wanna see me cover in the future, leave a comment down below. I read them all and hey, hope to see you next time. Bye.